So you really need to keep records about why you're making improvements or repairs to your property um, and have that detail. So if the ATO ever comes and asks, you have the backing up. So we're again with Michelle Maynard, a financial commentator from the Carbon Group. And today we're gonna to focus on, once again, investment property. And in terms, particularly approaching end of financial year, what can investors claim? And the difference particularly in relation to repairs and maintenance versus capital ones. But in terms of preparing ourselves, what would your comment be around that at this time? Sure, so tax deductions, everybody loves those. So anything that has to do with your investment property, any cost that you have. So I think the big misunderstanding is your mortgage payments. You can only claim the interest portion of your loan. You can't claim the principal repayments, which is why a lot of people only have their rental properties on interest only. Property management fees are obviously deductible, um, rates and taxes, land tax if you have to incur that. But the key thing where people sort of miss, I think, is that repairs and maintenance Correct. versus capital. So the ruling from the ATO is if you have to repair something that is broken and you repair it to the same standard that it was before, that's a repair. So for an example, if your garage door breaks or the tenant breaks your garage door and you replace it, it was a, a pull down one and the only thing that's available is an electronic shutter, then that is deductible. But if you happen to upgrade it to the latest whiz bang thing and go forward and just repairing it to an improvement, then that means capital and it goes back to having to be depreciated over several years. So the key thing here is wear and tear is actually covered as a repair. So carpets that wear out from being used in a rental property. Um, but anything that is an improvement on that, if you were to repair, say, a laminate floor with hardwood floors, the ATO would say that that is a capital improvement, not a repair. So you really need to keep records about why you're making improvements or repairs to your property um, and have that detail. So if the ATO ever comes and asks, you have the backing up to us. So it seems to me, Michelle, that when if you, if you take the repair maintenance to the next level where it's an upgrade, mm. then that becomes a capital works. And I suppose uh, in the commercial arena, an example might be, for example, air conditioning. So if I'm doing uh, ongoing maintenance and cleaning of an air conditioner or replacement of the filter, that would be repairs and maintenance. But if I was to, uh, if the air conditioning system was to break down and I had to replace it with same, would that be a, a deductible item? Would that be a capital item? If it broke down, then definitely it's a replaceable item, so it's a repair. If you were to decide, if your tenant comes to you and says, I would like air conditioning, please, because the fans are no longer working or doing a good job, then that would be a capital improvement. So it's really about making sure things are to the standard they were before, um, and that makes it, it puts it under the repairs and maintenance category. Something to really, uh, I, people get caught out with a lot too, is preparing a property for rent. If you make any, uh, do any work on a property then, that's actually capital, it's not repairs, even if you're fixing something that was broken, if it has, has to have been tenanted for it to be uh, able to be classified as a repair. So it's got to be an income producing property, it's got to be an investment property, be it residential or, or commercial. commercial. And of course these are all separate from the depreciation that you may have from that capital expenditure. It is. Okay, so if you're looking to make an informed decision around property matters, be it investment or own occupation, uh, certainly we encourage you to ask a Realmark representative in your area.